What's up everybody, we are back out here and it's an exciting day. I'm getting ready to do one of my most requested videos, which is the brakes on my Subaru BRZ. There's some decent videos out there, but I wanted to make sure that everyone does their brakes properly because they are the most important part on your car. So let's go ahead and do the front brakes on my BRZ. Here are all the tools you're gonna need for the job. 19 millimeter socket, 17 millimeter socket, 14 millimeter socket, a breaker bar, a bungee cord, a half inch drive, brake parts cleaner, PB blaster, aluminum anti-seize, and this synthetic brake and caliper grease. This is different than copper anti-seize and it's used in our cars on the slide pins. I like to use a tiny little screwdriver to get the pads out and that's about it. You'll see me using impact wrenches, but you don't need them for this job. Just use them to go faster. You can get these bolts off with a breaker, some PB blaster and a little bit of um. Car safely in the air and on jack stands. I'm gonna remove the wheel and be able to access the brake. All right, now that I have the wheel off, I'm gonna use the rust penetrant on the slide pin bolts and the caliper mounting bolts. Uh, there are two of each. Now that we've got the wheel off and we've hit everything with rust penetrant, just a quick couple of notes. These two holes here are sights so that you can look and see the pad to see how much material is left. My pads still have a little bit of material, but my rotors were pretty much done and we're coming up on the winter. So it's time to be doing this. In order to make your life easier, once you have the wheel off, go ahead and turn the wheel to the side you're working on. Now we move on to the caliper mounting bolts. This is a 17 millimeter bolt and it's usually pretty stuck on there. I can't get my impact wrench on it because of the strut. So the way that I do this is by using a breaker bar and a hammer. I need to turn the wheel a little bit more. All right, there we go. I'm gonna move you guys so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, I got an impact socket on there. All right, pulling up, and then same thing down here on the bottom. Now I switch over to the ratchet. Now that we have the caliper bolts, uh, all the bolts loosened, we can pull the caliper off of the rotor. Now, once you do this, you wanna have your bungee cord ready so you can hang it, and there we go. Wow, look at all that. You want to set the caliper up and away so that you have room to get to all this here. Now, take note of how everything is oriented because uh, the BRZ has different spring clips on the top and the bottom. The top gets this little earmark and you need to make sure that the pad you put in has the earmark facing towards the top. So uh, let's move forward here. Two caliper bolts. Now I should have no trouble getting these pads up. And yet, trouble. It's just that much brake dust and shit on these. During this entire process, it's important to keep note of the caliper's arrangement. I'm gonna set it up so that the bigger letters are towards the bottom. Uh, that puts the larger spring clip towards the top and the smaller spring clip towards the bottom. Once you remove the spring clips, you can pull the pins, clean this up, and then re-grease the pins. Okay, so we're gonna pull these slide pins now and we're gonna put them safely on this clean rag. Okay, and that's the one with the rubber cover towards the bottom. And there's two. And that is, yep, not the rubber cover towards the top. Let's wipe it down. All right, now we're moving on to treating the slide pins. We're just gonna wipe all the grease off here on each pin, just like that. And then we grease the pins and plop them back in. All right, you wanna make sure there's no dirt or debris like there is here. And if there is, you wanna remove it. I'm gonna pull this boot off, rest it somewhere clean, wipe the entire pin. Okay, put the boot back on. Make sure you put it on the way it came off. Okay. 
apply liberally. Okay. And that was the solid pin, so that goes in the top hole. Okay, moving on to the next one. Inspect for any dirt or debris. I am. All right, then take the boot, make sure it's clean, slide it back on, plop it over its slot, and then grease the pin. Now that I've got my slide pins done, we're gonna move on to reassembling the caliper with the larger letters towards the bottom, as that's how I've had it oriented the entire time. I will begin reassembling the spring clips, the larger one towards the top. Same thing here. Okay, now we put the pads. Towards the short side first, then down towards the long side. Same thing with the silver one, short side first, and down towards the long side. Make sure you're properly aligned. And now with those done, we can go ahead and install our new pads. We want the earmarks with the earmarks. So the trick to getting these in is being mindful of these two springs here and here. Use these edges, these angled edges here, to catch the spring clip. So I do the bottom side first, and you tilt the angled edge in to catch that spring clip. Like that. And then same thing on the top side. Push down and forward. Check your pads. Make sure you didn't get any copper anti-seize on the pad material. And let's go over to the, the last car. thing we need to do is replace the rotor so we've got these bolt these metric bolts that thread right into the holes of the rotor usually these rotors don't come off without the use of these bolts i tried on the other side to get it off without the bolts and it didn't work on this side i'm just defaulting to using the bolt finally yeah, this rotor was warped too now we have really good visuals here. These are the holes for the pad carrier mounting bracket or the caliper mounting bracket. Note that these are not threaded. So the threads are actually on the caliper themselves. So you have to be careful reinstalling it. The inside of my pistons, oh my God. That is so much brake material, it's crazy. Ready to put the new rotor on. Beautiful. Now caliper carrier bracket, but I'm gonna give you guys a better angle. Assembling it off the car was so much easier. Oh my God. Hmm? <laughs> now we can squeeze these pads in. The last step is to torque these two bolts to 59 foot pounds of torque. Doing that. Oh, the last right. thing we need to do before we finish is retract the pistons, but my brake fluid is too high for me to do that. So we need to pull some of it out. I've got a hand pump here and I'm gonna suck out some of my brake fluid. If you don't have this, I think the next best thing is to go to the back right wheel and bleed a little bit from there. Okay, I've got a nice clean hose here. It's gonna go into the top of here and suck out some of my brake fluid. Now my brake fluid is not above the max line. Um, I'm gonna leave the cap off to start retracting the pistons. As you retract the pistons, this fluid will come up, so keep an eye on it. Let's come on over. All you need in order to retract pistons, I use these Irwin Quick Grip, they're great. All you do is use the back of the caliper as a mounting surface for the other side of the clamp. Make sure that you're not hitting anything sensitive. Uh, the bottom one's easy because the brake line isn't there, but the top one's challenging because the brake line is there. And we're just gonna go ahead and start to squeeze this clamp to push the whole piston in. You wanna make sure you're centered on the face of the piston as best as possible. 
and remember to keep an eye on the fluid as you do this. Okay, that's one, pretty much retracted. Now two, a little trickier because of the brake line, but I go in at a slight angle, keeping an eye on the brake fluid all the while. There we go. Oh yeah. Now you may have noticed that this one came out a little bit. That's no problem. Just head back on over and should do it. Now you can come over here and this will fit over the pads. Then you just push the slide pins in to allow the caliper over them. Two bolts left. Now we just need to torque the caliper, uh, which takes 18 foot-pounds of torque, which is not a lot. It's one. It's a 19 millimeter socket. It is well time to be doing my rotors. These are quite a few years old. They've gone through a couple of sets of pads and my pads are pretty worn as well. When you come in here, you wanna inspect these boots, make sure that they're not torn. If they are, you wanna replace them at this time. If these pins get seized, that can be a really big problem. My boots look like they're okay, but we will get a closer look at them once the calipers are off the car. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is remove the pads. That's with this 14 millimeter bolt and then yeah we'll go from there i'm also going to hit the caliper mounting bracket bolts that thread into the back of the spindle there are two of them they're 17 millimeters here's the upper one and there's the lower one so i'm going to be using a 14 millimeter socket a small extension and a half inch drive and a bungee cord as you can see here the brake hose is very close to the top caliper slide pin. I needed that extension to get the wrench past that. We need to hang this caliper safely so that this hose never gets damaged. We're gonna take our bungee cord. Now that's not going anywhere. Pop these out using a tiny little screwdriver, just like that. Same thing on the other side like that. If you're reusing your rotors, I'd be careful doing that. Do it with a non-metal utensil so that you don't damage them. Now it's time to do the 17 millimeters. Oh, okay, now that I'm done being dumb, I'm actually gonna turn the wheel. Now that the wheel's been turned and we can actually get to these bolts, let's break them loose. Back to the breaker bar, but we have more access this time. Oh yeah. Boom. Give to me this. Switch to the half inch drive. That's one. The last thing we need to do is remove the rotor. These things tend to get seized onto their hub. They're easy to break by hammering. So the proper way to get this is by threading bolts into these holes here to push the rotor out. Got two bolts placed in the rotor holes. Thread them in gradually. Once I start to feel resistance, I'll switch the other one, get that all the way threaded in. And now just one step at a time, start threading those bolts in and they will push the rotor off of the backing plate until it finally gives. And there it goes. We're back on the table. We're gonna pull the spring clips out of the caliper mounting bracket. Okay, there's one. They have these little tabs. Just push up, it comes right up. And I keep them oriented. So now I'm taking the time to inspect my slide boots and pins. You can pull this out and take a quick peek. If you did see a tear in the boot, now would be the time to take those pins out and treat them. There's my used rotor, caliper mounting bracket, the pads, and all the associated bolts and clips. The last thing we need to do is re-lubricate the slide pins. Very easy, you just pull these slide pins out from there and just give it a good tug. Okay, there's one, there's two. Get a clean rag. And you want to wipe down both the grease from the caliper and the grease from the pins. All right, so there's your slide pin, plastic rubber washer that goes over it, both cleaned up. Now we're gonna grease the pin and then slide each boot back over. I'm gonna put the boot back on first and grease the pin just above the boot. All right, slide the pin in. 
put the boot over. Make sure that any excess grease that you have, if any, you want to try and avoid it, if you have any, that you get it off the boot immediately. It's not that the grease is bad for the boot. Uh, what will happen is that the grease will attract and hold on to dirt, and that dirt will get into the joints of the boot and wear it over time. So you don't want any grease to stick around. Okay, so that's one done. Now, with the bracket all cleaned up, we fit it with a wire brush to clean up where the spring clips go. We fit it with brake parts cleaner. We've re-greased the slide pins. Now we're ready to get rid of all of this. We've got the OEM brake pad kit, so it came with the spring clips, backing plates, and even some copper anti-seize. All right, so now we're gonna put the spring clips back in. The big spring clip with this sort of arm here goes at the top. So we're gonna use these. All right, so to apply this molly coat to the spring clips, I'm gonna cut a very, very fine edge there. Okay, now I should have some control over the amount that comes out. All right, and we just wanna get a little bit in there. All right, that's one down. Now that we've finished preparing the caliper mounting bracket, we're gonna reinstall it on the car before we go and treat the pads. I'm gonna put a little bit of aluminum anti-seize on the hub so that the rotor is less prone to sticking to it. And just a little dab in between each set of wheel studs, being sure not to get any aluminum anti-seize on the wheel studs themselves, should do it. All right, now we're gonna put the rotor on. That should do it. Okay, now we're getting ready to mount the rotor. We need the two 17 millimeter caliper mounting bracket bolts and the caliper mounting bracket, and that just slides right on. And the bolts go through the spindle hole and into the back of the bracket. Okay, and we'll come back and torque those in a bit. Now we head back over to the table. All right, so we need one pair of pads. The back of the pads get a little dab of grease here and here, and then the black, one black clip and one silver clip each. The grease that we use for this is not copper anti-seize, but the uh, same grease as the caliper slide pins. Just a little dab, and a little dab, and a little dab, and a little dab one black and one silver backing plate. One black, and one silver. One black, one silver. And you'll notice that I'm catching the lip of the shorter corner on the pad and then pressing down on the longer corner. Now we take these nice new pads and bring them over to the car, put them into the rotor. Now we're getting ready to put the uh, outside pad in. The trick to these pads is to actually tip them in like this. Okay. The last thing to do is remove the bungee cord and reinstall the caliper. Um, in order to do that, we have to first retract the piston. Um, so I'm gonna get a clamp. Now I've got the bungee cord removed. We need to pop the hood and remove the lid off the master cylinder. Okay, and the reason that we do this is so that when we push the piston, fluid has somewhere to go. And hopefully it won't overfill. So now with the lid off of the master cylinder, take the piston. All right, now with the pistons retracted, I should have no trouble getting the caliper over the brakes. Boom. Okay, now I'm gonna gently tighten those, the 14 mil. There we go, one side done. Hey, if you made it this far into the video, I'd like to give you a special thanks for checking it out. Don't forget to hit a like and subscribe button for me as it is a non-invasive way to support the channel and enables me to keep putting out content for you guys. 
I've had a lot of fun making videos this year in 2022, and I'm really looking forward to the content I'll be able to put out next year in 2023. But stay tuned, because we still got a few surprises left this year. See you then.